Kyle, it's less than two weeks to your testimonial game at the LEL Arena. The culmination of what's been a, a fantastic testimonial year for yourself has been plenty of events up here in Cumbria, down and around St. Helens, and obviously the area you've spent pretty much the last, last decade of your life in and around the uh, running around the St. Helens area. But culmination's coming up in, in, the, uh, in a couple of weeks' time with the return of Cumbria to the uh, recreation ground, the LEL Arena, after was it twelve years away? Far too long for yeah. for Cumbria yeah. not to play not to play at Whitehaven. But you know, it's been a, a fantastic year so far. You must be looking forward to to getting back to the recre and putting them boots on one more time. Yeah, I am, mate. Uh, yeah, no, it's obviously uh, you know a lot of work has gone into uh, to organising this game and and you know <clears throat> straight to no, not 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 actually straight away after the Jamaica game. It was just great. All the lads, you know, all the lads were were buzzing to be back round with each other and. Uh, obviously, you know, we put on a good display against Jamaica as they were preparing for the World Cup and turned them over as well. So it was just great to see all the fans getting behind Cumbria Rugby League. And when I got my testimonial granted a month later, I actually thought, well, why not? Why not get the boys back together again and do and, you know, represent Cumbria again? So, uh, yeah, no, look, obviously, you know, very grateful to get a testimonial to start with and, you know, the, the support I've had from it all year has been has been fantastic. So, to finish off, uh, to finish everything off uh, one more time, back in my hometown, uh, playing for Cumbria that I absolutely love, you know, every time we've got the opportunity to play, I, I made sure I was available for it. And, uh, and yeah, hopefully just, just put on a big... A big show and showcase Cumbria Rugby League, and it's important that you know after we're speaking with Paul Crary and John T. Gawley, Gary Murdoch, it's important that we keep building this sort of Cumbria brand and and not only look ahead to this game, but look ahead to you know potential fixtures down the line. I do, I, I do genuinely believe that a strong Cumbria side would give any of Scotland, Wales, Ireland. You know, Italy, Serbia. You know, I think they'd give them more than a competitive game than perhaps they would playing against England or playing against France. Even you know, there's no point in these teams getting hammered by 40, 50 points. They don't really learn anything. But I think for us uh, as well, you know, people are very, very tribal back where we're from. Andy Jordan, you'll know that you're very much in the thick of it all. You know, whether that's to their amateur clubs or to the hometowns or 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 anything. You know, you got every time I go up there, you always see people in, you know, the amateur the amateur clubs uh, training kit or the NRL kits or Super League kits, and and one thing that, you know, while there is probably a bit of a disconnect between the semi pro game and the amateur game, there's there's no point in in in, uh, in glossing over that. I think that when Cumbria gets together, you know, the, 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 the figures tell you that, that it's well supported and go back to being tribal, that they, they almost enjoy being Cumbrian. Whenever you go away on holiday or whatever, you'd say you were Cumbrian, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? So it's just a good opportunity for us to put something on that the whole county can get behind. And obviously we've had a, we've had a shirt, uh, the shirt and the kit that's been gone on sale and that's been very well received and very well supported. And a lot of people have, have, I've uh, uh, bought those as well, so that tells us that that you know that they actually they really do enjoy being uh, supporters of Cumbria Rugby League. So we're just dead excited to get up there. We've got a, we've got a big squad that we could have selected from thirty seven blokes, put the hand up to play, which was amazing. Uh, you know, we've already released a sort of twenty eight man squad of that, and a lot of big names in there as well. So hopefully, uh, you know, fans alike can come and see some of the guys who regularly run around in Super League come and play. Um, so yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of stuff going on. Certainly, as you mentioned, the Cumbria squad, the sort of twenty eight man squad that was announced sort of ten days ago, as it was now, the likes of T. Rickson, Jordan Johnston, James Donaldson. I'm probably missing a couple there as well. You know, off, off the off the top of my head, Harvey Hill we obviously had a, a standout season at, at Wigan. Yeah. Obviously, depending on how the Super League Grand Final goes in the playoff picture, we may not see the likes of T. or. Or, or Harvey, but you, you know, you'd imagine you're going to see be able to see the likes injury injury bears of of like James Donaldson and uh, and, and a couple of others who like who don't get the opportunity to play in Cumbria all that often. You know, their, their careers have took them into Super League or even the likes of maybe like Alistair Leake, who's who's been playing at Batley and had a forged a very good career out in the Championship. He hasn't had a good he hasn't had a, an opportunity to as a Cumbrian to play in front of a of a home crowd when he's when he's come home he's always played in sort of you know it's always been sort of away fixtures so for them boys to be able to to have an opportunity to represent Cumbria in front of hopefully a, a healthy partisan crowd at the recreation grounds 
it makes up for a fantastic evening. Absolutely, mate. You know, you've hit the nail on the head there. You know, when I've spoke to all these players individually, they're all really excited about getting the opportunity to play for Cumbria. I know James Donaldson in particular, he... He's, uh, he's every time that's become available for whatever reason, he's not been able to make it, whether it's through injury or him actually being away or whatever. So he's really excited. And also he knows that, that it may be, you know, hopefully it's not because hopefully, like what I said, we want to keep building on, on, on this. And, you know, Paul Carrera has already asked me to, to be involved within the Cumbria Rugby League setup if it is going forward, you know, for, for, for future games and stuff. And obviously not as a player, uh, but, um, you know, so, so, so there may be an occasion where we might have to wait a couple of years before Cumbria Rugby League gets to play again. Hopefully it won't be the case, but I think people like James Donaldson recognise that, that it might be their last opportunity in their careers, given that the age they're at. Uh, you know, Brad Singleton, you know, Super League enforcer himself, he's, he's going to play. Obviously, he, Brad's, uh, Brad played in the last two Cumbria games when we put, uh, obviously, Jamaica and England Knights before that. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, he's absolutely loved it as well. So, uh, you know, you've got other players in there, Brandon Miller from Halifax and, and Brad Walker, you know, these lads who were, who, were, who were quality players and who played, you know, Brad Walker particularly, he's had some Super League experience with Wakefield and, uh, you know, so so we've got a real healthy team and even all the, the guys from Whitehaven working in Barrow are all quality players, you know, you know, and, for me, what it shows is is that if there was ever, say, I know it's divides opinion still, but if there was ever going to be a Cumbria team, well, that squad would certainly compete in the championship. Absolutely, you know. So, but that's a converse, conversation for another day, John. I think, but uh, no, for us, we're just really excited to get out there and play. And like I say, we've got we've got a lot of good stuff happening on the day. We've got eight community clubs all across Cumbria. I think we've got Wathbrow, Egremont, uh, Kells, Lauka, Broughton Red Rose, Maryport, Walney and Barrow Island all bringing an under nines team up to play in a curtain raiser beforehand. So we wanted to try and bring as much of Cumbria together uh, as we could and, and that's certainly one way. So there'll be a little sort of curtain raiser happening before the game, before the warm-up. So there's plenty that, you know, all those kids will get to experience and have memories of something that's hopefully going to be pretty special because I know it sounds cheesy, Jordan, I've said this to you before in the past as well, but whenever Cumbria have played and, and whenever top, you know, top flight rugby came to the county, it's been very well supported, hasn't it? You you look back at Scotland when they had their Four Nation campaign and, and you know, the crowds that were there. Uh, you, you know, again, touch on the Jamaica game last year, St. Helens nearly 6,000 in the, in the recreary that day and, and for me, like I know all the players at Saints, they couldn't believe, you know, they thought it took them about half an hour to get off the field because all the kids come flying on at the end and, and we're just wanting to be in around the players and get autographs and stuff. And it was the same last year against Jamaica. Um, and, and for me, that's where, that's where you capture the next generation's imaginations, if you like, you know, give them heroes for a day and whatnot. So hopefully... Uh, you know, we are, we've already sold quite a few tickets for the game anyways. And uh, talking to the organisers of last year, there was quite a lot on the day walking up. And so, well, again, we're hoping for a nice, healthy crowd there. And, and for it's just as well for me, you know, obviously, Jordan, I, I have an, a hope and a, and a uh, yeah, I have a hope for Cumbria Rugby League. I really do. Um, of what it may look like in the future. And I think these games are just little reminders, not only to people of Cumbria, but wider than that, the game. Look what look what can happen up here. If you want it to look like what it looks like, look what you look look what we can do. You know, I think it's important that we keep being that 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 bit of noise and banging the drum for it, um, because you know you talk about the changes that IMG are bringing in, and you know how they're sort of starting to categorise and 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 mark up against the standards of what licenses are going to look like whether it's a category a b c whatever there's a lot of criteria you've got to tick in there and i think for the game going forward there could be something there there really could be but uh for us as players it's important that we just whenever we play we uh you know we just keep ripping in like we do and hopefully uh you know again if fans get behind the game uh and you know whether you're a supporter of you know, whoever, whichever player from your amateur club or, or if you're a family friend or whatever, or if, or if it's for my testimonial or if it's for just the sake of Cumbrian Rugby League, we just, we obviously want you to get down there and uh, and keep building the momentum that we've created. 
you've mentioned about bang of the drum about Cumbria. When when Cumbria comes together, um, it, it shows what it can do. We've seen what Cumbria could do following the, the England game back in 2010, that 18-all draw mm-hmm. at the recreation ground, obviously in what was tragic circumstances on yeah. uh, following the following them following the, the, the shootings in, in June of twenty ten. Cumbria came together in only really a matter of months. It was only what less just over four months from the shootings until the fixture happened, yeah. sort of the week the week of the Super League grand final. So what yeah, while England weren't at full strength, the Cumbria side on that afternoon showed the work on do in sort of circumstances. Sort of moving it away from from, from that and obviously you, you know before you have the Friday night game, you're gonna have a, an evening uh, a charity evening where you're going to be uh, raising some funds for for the Logan Hallgate Memorial uh, Fund there as well. You're going to be some some funds, some proceeds from that evening. Tell us a bit about that, and you know, it's just still an opportunity yeah. to get involved. Yeah, yeah, no, there is, there is. Obviously, we, we we've sold over two hundred and I think it's two hundred and twenty tickets for that. So, uh, you know, that's all that's going to happen the day before. Uh, basically, we've just going to you, you know we, we we opened our testimonial up there with an opening night. Uh, that, that went down really, really well. Uh, it is a bit tricky this one because it's on a Thursday. I think that's you know, but again, it's very well supported. Again, lots of local businesses have have come on board of that. And uh, you know what we wanted to do was, uh, if we kind of just rewind a little bit, Jordan, and go back to the the Cumbrian the Cumbrian game against England. Off the back of those shootings, obviously we, uh, you know, it was horrendous, really, what happened, uh, and and the, the Gary Purden Memorial game. Uh, we we've what we've got happening on the day of our game is we've got the Purden boys coming down, uh, Cameron and Flynn, uh, and they're gonna they're gonna hand the ball over to the Logan Holgate brothers, uh, Fletcher and Allison, to then pass on to the referee because what we, what we wanted to do was 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 sort of remind or or sort of remember uh Gary Purdom and not only him but the other victims who lost their lives on that on that tragic day. We wanted to we wanted to show that the game is back at Whitehaven like it was twelve years ago. It's important not to forget that. And uh, but it's almost passing the baton on to another charity where we can we feel that this game can help that the new charity in the in the Gary and Logan Hall uh, Lionheart Fund, sorry. Uh, so we've got bucket collectors going around on the day for the Holgate family as well. And, you know, so, so there'll, there'll be, you know, seven or eight people from Hensingham Rugby League as well, my old amateur club. So, but on that night, the night before, we're basically just going to, you know, do a sort of a, a gentleman's evening and, uh, and we're going to make a donation off the back of that evening towards the, towards the fund, really. So, uh, you know, we've got the, we've got the charity in the room on the night as well. They're coming along and, and we've got a video done to, to show uh, the room what the charity is, who they are, how it came about, etc., uh, and hopefully it'll just sort of bring my testimonial events, if you like, to a close, and and uh, and and also do a bit of good off uh, off raising some money because, like I said, the the testimonial year has gone well, uh, so we just felt it was important that we try and put something together where we can give something give something a little bit back, really. So, uh, but yeah, that's happening, and and uh, just again on that game. Uh, in 2010, I am now of the age, Jordan, where if Harvey Hill does get to play, if Luke Broadbent is selected, because like again, these coach, uh, the coaches are picking the team. I've already said to Paul Crary, obviously, look, you know, it's my it's my game. I'd like to start the game, but <laughs> the minute I start hurting the team, I'm out of there. I wanted him to pick this team on merit, pick this team as you know of, of what of what you want Cumbria to keep being going forward to pick your strongest side. You know, and and obviously um, we spoke about you know all the players coming together, but after that I've left it over to him to pick. You know, it is his team; he is the coach. But if a Luke Broadbent plays, if Curtis Tia plays, if Harvey Hill plays, I'll have, I'll have played with their dads. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I'm that age. I know exactly where you were going with it. Yeah, and, uh, Gary Broadbent the fullback that day, and. Uh, uh, Harvey uh, Howard Hill obviously played with Howard on that day, so yeah, that's a bit mad, really, isn't it? To think I'm going to play with their sons, but uh, but no, look, good. It's over to them now. You know, I really enjoy watching young lads from back home and 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 seeing them play a Super League and whatnot. It really it really does you know give me a sense of pride watching them. So uh, you know, I look forward to their careers developing as well, and uh, yeah, hopefully I can get to play with them all, and uh, yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a great night. Obviously, yeah, hopefully so, Carl. We're going to have a, a quick look back at your, your time at Whitehaven. You signed in the winter of yeah. 2008. 
just going into the 2009 pre-season, going into that pre-season, did you see the career you had or was it just a case of wait and yeah. see where we go? No, mate, no, I'm not. No, honestly, I went there. <clears throat> I went there thinking that, you know, if I get a couple of games, great. Do you know what I mean? I never once thought I, uh, I'd, I'd get the career that I got out of it. Absolutely no way. Um, I still really haven't had time to sit back and digest on on, on what I've been able to achieve as a player. Uh, probably because it's not actually fully over until the, after this game. And, you know, I'm obviously very busy now as well, Jordan, doing the other bits off the field. Um so I don't. I, probably this pre probably this off season will be a time to just sit back and reflect on it. I think, um, but you know, never in a million years when I, you know, when we when Jed Stokes had us running up and down uh, Midgey Hill, uh, you know, in pre season, and, and and never in a million years did I think I'd get to experience the things I have through the game. Just got it in front of me. Forty five games for Whitehaven. I just don't remember how many starts is that. Twenty five starts, twenty off the bench. Nine tries, prolific for a prop forward in them days, Kyle. You then moved, obviously moved on to, to Leeds and then Wakefield and then obviously the big move to St. To St. Helens and obviously yeah. all them Super League, Super League, Super League Grand Final winners and Challenge Cup winners mm-hmm. at, at, at St. Helens. Obviously, you know, then a bit of, bit of spell on loan at, at Warrington last season and, and obviously ending the career at Widnes. Well over 300 career games, a couple of World Cup appearances as well. Hasn't been a bad career, has it? No, no, it's gone all right. It's gone all right. Look, it probably uh, those last two clubs probably take the gloss of it, really. But uh, no, look, I, I, I was done by that point, really. Uh, you know, I think it's a bit weird, Jordan, because when you when your time is up as a player, I think deep down you know. I think I knew, uh, but I didn't. You know, but, you know, my body and my mind was probably telling me enough's enough. But being a stubborn bloke that I am, I kept trying to trying to find a way and hopefully think, right, give me a, give me a reason to go after something. And, you know, and it, it just never came. And in the end, I had to just, you know, walk away from that and uh, and call it a day because it wasn't healthy for me being out there. It wasn't, wasn't enjoying it. Uh, and the game is a bloody hard game to play, as we all know. And, and, and it's almost not safe if you're not, if you're not enjoying it and you're not, your head's not in the right space for it. So look, I've done it long enough, you know, um, I don't. I done it long enough, and you know, I, I did it. I did it my way. Do you know what I mean? So, um, very, very grateful for everything that I was able to achieve. But um, yeah, it was just like I say. It was. Uh, I tell you what, it doesn't have to go by quick. You know, uh, if uh, if that was any advice I'd give to any players, just enjoy every moment of it. So. And you mentioned keeping yourself busy these days. Uh, you know, I think I've, I've seen you on more TV programmes in the last sort of week than I've, than I've seen anyone else. You know, see Sky, Channel 4, as we speak on the Sunday, you're off to Tuesday, you're, you're off to Odsall this evening to go. Um, to I'm the, off to Odsall this evening, yeah, yeah, to do the, uh, the the beginning of the championship playoffs as well. So, uh, very, very busy. Uh, next weekend's Channel 4, the women's grand final. Uh, the weekend after that, oh, I've got a busy week. I've got that, that event on Thursday night. I've got the game obviously on Friday. We've got to shoot down to Old Trafford to do the grand final on on the Saturday, and then I've got the wheelchair grand final doing Manchester the day after as well. So very very busy, uh, hundred mile an hour sometimes. And uh, but lucky, I absolutely love it. I absolutely, you know, I'm a huge. You know, we're talking about it before about my mind and my body not, you know, wanting to to do the game anymore. I absolutely love the game. I do. Um, you know, I, I just love everything that's it's been able to do for me and my family. But not only that, I'm actual. You know, I'm a huge nerd and a big fan of the game. I don't mind. You know, I'm not embarrassed to say that. Uh, and you know, it gives me a bit of energy. You know what I mean? Like doing doing the media work and there's a great buzz out of it as well. When you you know when you're doing the live TV because it's a it's a little bit like playing where there's a pressure on, there's a pressure to nail your job and, and whatnot. And, uh, but there's nothing better than being at live sport in one of the best seats in the house and just just letting the players do their thing and then you just sort of bring bring it across. You know, obviously Jordan, I've, I'm aware that you do quite a bit of the commentary yourself for the for the Whitehaven games and you must know exactly what I'm talking about. It's yeah. it's a it's a fantastic job to be involved in, it really is. Yeah, I mean, I've got a bit of a running joke in mind. I've got a, an Apple Watch on, and I, I'm, I'm monitoring the heart rate, and it's probably not getting to it's getting to sort of abnormal levels at, at sort of times. You know, I get I get the heart rate notifications. Your heart rate, you're, you're inactive. What are you doing? And um, yeah, you know, it's being able to be, being right in sort of the middle of it. Obviously, you know, eventually being right in the middle of it, especially being part of sort of Channel 4's coverage. You know, you you could have a few million people watching. If you know, free to air television. 
peak times on a on a Saturday lunchtime, it's you know it's plenty of pressure when there's a, a few million people on the other end of that microphone. Yeah, it is. It is. But uh, look, it's again, you know, I've I've, I've been doing it now, and I, I've done a lot of stuff, um, you know, behind the scenes before I got opportunities with Channel Four and Sky and whatnot. So, uh, I've, I, you know, I like to think I've got quite a few games under my belt. If that makes, if you know, I kind of feel like I've sort of. I'm still learning all the time. I don't ever think you ever stop learning really with it. There's always bits that you can tweak and do better, of course. But uh, again, very similar to playing. You're not always going to play the best game, but you've just got to make sure that if you've done the, the miles and you've done the prep, then you're good to go, aren't you? You know, um, And that's what I try and do. You know, I just, I always just want to champion the players for what they are. I know it's a, I was watching that game yesterday while I was doing the Channel 4 game and I thought, wow, I thought I was looking at how tired the boys were and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I know exactly how that feels and I'm so glad I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> so, so I just want to champion the players, you know, I just want to try and be as positive as I can be around, you know, around what, what they do and what they put themselves through. And so, yeah, that's just my little, my little spin and, and, and how I, how I like to do it, but everyone has their own different style. It's, uh, yeah, it's all good. I'm going to give you the final word, Kyle, on, on what so your testimonial year has been like on, and what, you know, what you want to see coming into that final, final couple of weeks now and what you want to reach out to the, to the fans of, of Cumbrian Rugby League and, and further to, to support this game in in less than two weeks' time. Yeah, no, obviously, Jordan. Look, you know, I just want to thank everybody who supported me. Not even, not only just during this testimonial year, but all throughout my career. There's just probably too many people to thank, and a lot of people, you know, who who, who helped me along the way up in Whitehaven, uh, up in Cumbria. You know, obviously, I played in the the amateur scene for. For about four or five years, an open age player. So each of those players and coaches that I've met along the way have have, have helped me. You know, so uh, obviously, I'd just like to big thank you to everyone up there, and 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 just sort of again, I'll go back to what I said earlier. Look, this is it's a little bit more than just my testimonial. This it really is. It's about it's about Cumbria Rugby League. It's about getting your getting your kids down there on a Friday night, and it's raining, and they're stood with a, a, a bloody bag of chips or a bob reel and they're watching these players play and then at the end they're all coming on and wanting to be a part of it it's giving them memories and giving them you know j- just giving them a bit more really because you know I think I think now more than ever especially up in where, where we're from there needs to be a successful team there has to be something that's there has to be something for kids to to aim and grasp hold of and and and, and strive to be be like or be towards in sport or whatever and they're not always going to all make professional sports but I get that but it just there's so much more that comes off the back of playing sport. There really is, and the more kids that we can get, you know, just even just even just having a dream and or, or having a, uh, you know, something to aim at. That's healthy, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's it it gives them a bit a bit of a push. So look again, we just want to get everyone down there, get everyone enjoying it, celebrate Cumbria Rugby League for what it is, uh, and and just keep building momentum for it. You know, I'd love nothing more to see, you know another fixture next year, whether it be a barrel or then, then and then you go around on like a carousel or whatever working barrel and keep doing that and, and keep giving players an opportunity to play with, you know, Super League players. You know, like you speak to T Ritz and if you speak to him about what it was like for him to play, you know, in Cumbria, he absolutely loved it. You know, we we basically all go, go down there. We all feel like we're the underdog from Cumbria, don't we, really? We're like, we, we, we do a bit of a chip on our shoulder, if that makes sense, in terms of when we talk about rugby league, because we feel like we're the forgotten, we're one of the forgotten heartlands. And everybody down here in the wider game wants to see a, a successful Cumbrian side. They really do. Um, but, and, and this, you know, I'm not going to say this is going to start it because we've had Cumbria games for a number of years, haven't we? Although there've been too long between drinks between between that one and last year at Jamaica, but this is an opportunity to sort of build something. I think uh, keep moving forward. Like the shirt, the shirt is predominantly made up of Cumbrian based or Cumbrian owned businesses. Like they are willing to get behind sponsor it because each of those people I spoke to share the same idea. They want to see uh, you know a Cumbrian brand and 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 have. You know, the amount of shirts again that we sold, I can't wait. I can't wait to actually see all them shirts in the crowd and whatnot. It's gonna be it's gonna be great, you know. Um, but yeah, again, all all it is my sort my final word, I went on a bit there. It's just a big thank you, a big thank you to everybody who supported and just keep getting behind it because you know the players love it. 
well, the, the fans tell you that they love it because the numbers they come down in. And we just hope that, you know, even if you are going to the grand final the day after, just come down, support it, uh, and make a real exciting, action-packed weekend of, uh, of, of rugby league. Kyle, thank you very much for your time. I know you've had a busy day. You've been to watch the, the lad this morning before heading off to odds uh, this afternoon. So thank you very much for your time. Hopefully we'll catch up. You know, we, we plan to catch up a few times on, on that week uh, of Cumbria Week. So hopefully we'll have some, a bit more content coming out across the Kyle more testimonial socials, the Whitehaven socials. And I'm, I'm sure we'll speak to my colleagues at Bado and work to make sure we can get stuff out across there as well. But thank you very much. Catch up in a few weeks and all the best, man. Cheers, Jordan. Thanks again.